of Bookworms. It is the start of Book Expo. Today is day one and I am walking to the Hachette offices right now and I'm gonna meet Alexa and we're going to the novel brunch. So that should be a lot of fun. We have our spreadsheets ready, but I have to say that I feel like I'm doing a Book Expo differently this year because while I am very excited about it and there are some books that I really wanna get, I am being so relaxed and I can honestly say this is the first year where I'm not like dying to get my hands on one of the titles. Like last year I obviously needed The Wicked King. This year there are no Queen of Nothing arcs, otherwise that would be my like, I need this title or else book. I am really excited for The Starless Sea, but that's actually not being given out at Book Expo as far as I know it's gonna be at BookCon. So I'm pretty much just going and planning on hanging out with friends and having a very relaxed day. There, like I said, there are a couple things that I'm looking forward to getting, but I have the mindset that if I don't get something that I want, it's going to be coming out in a couple of months anyway, so I will eventually get to read it, which that's what it's all about. So yeah, but I have to run because I'm running a little bit late and actually Alexa is too, so I might beat her, but we'll see. Revolution of Bernie Randolph. So this is out August 20th. It's my fourth book, my third one with Little Brown. I love the cover, but I also love the book a lot. So I'll just tell you a little bit about it. Uh, Bernie Randolph, her actual name is Doug, uh, but her mom calls her Bernie. And they live in Chicago above her mother's hair salon in the neighborhood of Logan Square. Yes, Chicago. Um, so I used to, I lived in Chicago briefly. I live in LA now. Um, I lived in Chicago for four years. It was actually a little like, traumatizing to me because of like the weather. But I now love going back to visit, and I actually find it like super inspirational. Um, my first book point was uh, set in a fake suburb of Chicago, and so. It finally went back. I set uh, my next two books in LA, and then I finally set another one in Chicago, and it was just so fun. It just, I don't know why it's so inspirational to me. It just feels really good. So, anyway, they live, uh, she lives with her mom and dad above uh, her mother's hair salon in Logan Square in Chicago. And Birdie is just sort of like the perfect kid. Like, her summer is SAT prep. <laughs> like, that's what she's doing for the summer, and she has no choice in it. And she makes great grades, and um, she had to stop playing soccer a couple years ago because her mom was basically like, you know, if you're playing soccer but you're not gonna get like a scholarship or you're not gonna go pro, like, you need to just do academics. And so she's like, all right. So she just kind of goes along with what her parents say. She has an older sister, Mimi, who's out of the house now in college, and she just sort of knows that like she and Mimi have this path that they're supposed to go on. They're supposed to go to college, get good jobs, you know, probably something that makes a lot of money, like a doctor or a lawyer or something, and that's that. So then, Bernie meets this guy named Booker, who is her friends with her best friend, Laz, and they just like, have this instant connection. But she knows that her parents won't really, I'm gonna try not to spoil too much of it, um, she knows that her parents will really want her dating him. Um, he's kind of got like a messy past that she knows they're not gonna like, so she starts secretly dating him. And then at the same time, this woman shows up at their house, her aunt Carlene, and she's like never met her. She like doesn't remember much about her. Mom doesn't talk about Carlene at all, which seems really strange to her. So Carlene is fresh out of rehab, and her mom tells her that Carlene's been in rehab like on and off since they were teenagers. So there's a lot of tension between her mom and her aunt, and um, her aunt moves in with them. And she's also a hair, she's like a hairdresser, so she's like getting her braiding license so she can work in her, in her sister's shop. There's a lot of, uh, that's about all I can say without spoiling it. There's a lot of family drama, and I think my books aren't necessarily known for their happy romances or romances that work out, but this was one of my favorites to write. And with her and Booker, it's just like sort of a sweet, like first love, kind of forbidden love. Lots of family secrets, romance, first love, Chicago, summer, yeah. 
We did it. We, we did got it. our badges party. We are ready to go. Always my least favorite thing is whenever I'm getting a badge and someone says, What's the name of your company? And I have oh, to me say, too. <laughs> Super Space Chick. And they're always like, What? I'm, I'm like, like oh. <laughs> I never know how to respond. Oh, there it is. I oh, never know how to respond. Yeah, me neither. I'm always like, Alexa, I'm loves like, well, this is this question mark. <laughs> I mean, that anyway, is my company. We are gonna go grab Winterwood right now. Or try to. We'll see you later. We got Winterwood. We did it. We, did it. we got it from Lily, <laughs> who's our friend that works at Simon. Party. Yay. Still haven't read the book. Bye. It's good. This one is amazing. I'm very excited. It's so good. Wow. And the cover is beautiful. It, it is. is. I really love that cover. I actually like it. of Book Expo is officially in the books, done for the day, and... The Book Expo. I know, I'm so funny. Okay, so it was a really good day. Um, it was much like calmer than normal. There wasn't too much that anybody was like really running for with the exception of Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I did not even try for because if you remember <laughs> from my spinning silver experience last year, I was not trying to be involved in one of those kinds of lines. So Alexa and I made the executive decision to just avoid. We went, were able to go in and get my most exciting book of the day, in my opinion. That is Winterwood by Shea Earnshaw. I super loved The Wicked Deep, so I've been really like dying to read this one and I heard that it's even more atmospheric and the way that Shea Earnshaw wrote the atmosphere in Wicked Deep was like the best thing ever. So I'm quite excited to start this. I, there's a chance I might even start it tonight, but tomorrow is going to be a fuller day because the floor is open for the full amount of time, whereas today was kind of like a half-ish day. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. We like rearranged our schedule now that we know about some arc drops. There is a chance that we could maybe get the Starless Sea tomorrow morning, which would honestly just be the best case scenario ever. So I'm really hoping for that to work out. I also really want to get A Heart So Fierce and Broken uh, by Bridget Kemmerer, which is the conclusion to A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Ashley Alston's signing isn't until Friday, and that is like my number one. I'm so excited. I can't wait to meet her. I love her so much. And yeah, I think that's like, that's pretty much it for today. It's actually Andrew and I's third wedding anniversary, so I am home tonight with him, and we're having a very extravagant salad for dinner. <laughs> But we really celebrated over the weekend. I also need to get sleep because last night it was like 1 o'clock in the morning and I could not fall asleep and then I was like getting anxious about not being able to fall asleep because I knew that I had to wake up early. It was just a bad combination and that I had no caffeine today and I don't know how I survived. But Andrew and I are going to play some more Okami, which is this video game that has consumed our lives. And I am definitely going to sleep early tonight and getting up and getting ready to like be at book expo by 8 a.m. tomorrow, which is pretty early. That's pretty much it. So this is the most annoying thing that happened. 
So as you guys know, Starless Sea is the book that I wanted like more than anything. So yesterday we asked about it and they said that they would be giving it out if we come first thing in the morning to their booth. So we went there and they were like, no, we're not giving it out now, come later in the day. So we were like, all right. So we went back a little bit later in the day only to find out that they decided to give it out at 9.15 and we had gotten there at 9.03. So. Seriously though, that was just like heartbreaking. Yeah, that is like killing both of us. We were both like, we're not gonna get stressed out about anything this, this time around and then that, like, yeah. But we have another shot tomorrow, so crossing our fingers. Alrighty, day two is over. I am home and I got myself a copy of A Heart So Fierce and Broken, which I'm really, really, really looking forward to reading because I really enjoyed A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and this is the conclusion of the duology, which is so nice, so I can't wait to read this one. The Starless Sea Saga continues. So Alexa and I went to the booth again at the end of the day because we were like, you know what, maybe they'll have the time that they're gonna be dropping the Starless Sea tomorrow, so then we can at least prepare and get ready and whatever. So we went over to the booth and they were like, oh no, sorry, we're not doing any more drops of it until BookCon. And we were like, are you kidding me? So pretty much Starless Sea has been the biggest pain in the butt and the worst experience because they're, I guess the people who work there are just ill-informed or I don't know, they're, they're having a lot of communication issues because everybody seems to be getting different information. And then some other people were able to grab two copies in the morning, which doesn't seem very fair. So it's been a thing. I'm really hoping that I will be able to get it at BookCon. Like I said before, Starless Sea is the number one book that I wanted like more than anything to have gone through all of this like roller coaster ride of we're giving it away today. Never mind. Now they're gonna give it away 10 minutes later and then don't worry, it'll be there tomorrow to never mind, we're not doing it anymore tomorrow. It's just been like really stressful. And I know I said at the beginning of the vlog that I wasn't gonna get stressed out, and I think I wouldn't accept that we've just been given so much conflicting information. And if they had just been like, this is the time, or no, we're not giving it. Like if they were even just like, no, we're not giving it out at all, I feel like I would have been fine. It's just the fact that like people are getting it and they're like not telling the truth about what they're actually doing, so it's a pain. Anyway, <laughs> besides that, it was a really good day. I also got Mooncakes, which I'm really excited about. It's this graphic novel and it looks super cute. And yeah, I've got quite a bit here. I'm gonna film my Book Expo book con haul very soon. I think it should be up for you guys on as early as Sunday. So hopefully you'll enjoy that when I post it. And yeah. I actually I don't know what time I'm heading there tomorrow, but probably early again. Tomorrow my top priority is to meet Ashley Elston. I am obsessed with Ashley Elston. I love all of her books. I think she's like one of the most incredible authors and I'm so, so excited at the opportunity to meet her. I'm like dying pretty much. So that's like my my number one, number one thing. And then there are a couple of other things that we wanna grab, but overall should be kind of a chill day, which should be nice. So I'm actually going to start reading right now. Not a, not a book expo book though. I'm going to start reading The Start of Me and You right now because we're actually going to get a sequel to that tomorrow. So I want to have at least half of it read tonight before I go for that. And I've been told by everyone who I'm friends with that this will be my favorite one of her books. And I honestly have no doubt about it. So I'm pretty excited. But that's all for tonight and I will see you guys in the morning. It is book expo day three and we had a really good start to the morning. We with Alexa, of course. We ran and we got twice in a blue moon. And then super exciting, we were going to orbit to get the Queen of the Conquered, but we just missed it. And on the way, we saw a line and I was like, oh my gosh, and it was Stephen Chabosky's new book, which I'm dying to read. So that was a really unexpected and exciting surprise. And now we're waiting in line for the Capturing the Devil sampler by Carrie Fence Yay, so excited. They did a drop of Zoraida Cordova's new Star Wars book, which is a tie-in with Galaxy's Edge, so I'm pretty excited to read this. But we are currently like hovering near the Disney booth because Ashley Alston is going to be signing her new book, Ten Blind Dates, and I'm so excited for that one. I seriously cannot wait to read it, and it also already got picked up 
uh, by Netflix. It's gonna be adapted by the producer that did To All the Boys I Loved Before. And I'm so happy for her. <laughs> like, I can't wait. I'm really excited to meet her. This will be my first time ever meeting her in person and I hope that I'm not embarrassing. Hey! Okay, of course I know you as like super space chick. How are you? I'm good, I'm so glad to meet you in person. Oh, come on. Oh, please. Oh, please. That's sweet. Okay. Well, I hope you love it. Thank you so much. And congratulations. <laughs> My name is Marie Lou. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and before I talk about Rebel, I just wanted to say how awesome I think the book blogger community is. I didn't have book blogs to go to when I was a kid. I really would have appreciated that because I feel like if your blogs had been around when I was a kid, I would have been following every single one of them. Like I didn't know where to go to find out new titles of what was coming out and we didn't and we didn't have YA at the time either, so it was a very different time. But I just really appreciate what all of you do in spreading the word about books and spreading the word about our books. So, so thank you guys so much for that. And also, it feels really weird to be here talking again about Legend. Um, Legend came out eight years ago, and I kind of can't believe it's been eight years, and I feel really old when I say that now, because I can still remember being the debut, you know, um, at BEA and talking about uh, Legend when it was coming out. So it's really exciting and anxiety inducing for me to be talking again about this story and these characters that have been in my head for so long. Rebel is kind of a culmination of the Legend series, but also a little bit of Warcross, which is my other duology. Um, they're all set in the same world. When I first started writing Legend, uh, it was 2009, I think. I remember the reason why I started writing it was because I saw the old movie version of Late Miz on TV. This is the one with Liam Neeson in it. I was just watching it and thinking about nothing in particular when it kind of occurred to me that, oh, it would be really fun to do a teen version of this story. Like a So we just got to the lounge, which is where the Big Honcho Media Party is happening this year. Alexa and Rachel. Hi. And we are very excited to go inside. The decorations already look super cute, so I will definitely take a clip once we get in. forgot to film an I survived book expo clip at the end of the day but I got home from the party I took a shower so my hair is all wet and I am really looking forward to reading a little bit and then going to sleep and then I'm getting up early tomorrow yet again and I'm going to the Simon Teen breakfast which I am like so excited for. I cannot wait to meet Margaret Rogerson because she wrote Sorcery of Thorns and I really really loved that book like so much and even more exciting I will finally be meeting Cassandra Clare for the first time ever. I have never met her before ever and I'm like very excited because I have read all of her books <laughs> so that will be that will be a time but I just wanted to show you a couple of quick things that I got today. So there was a clip earlier of me meeting Ashley Elston and I got 10 blind dates and I'm so, so excited about it. This is probably going to be one of the first books that I read, if not the first book that I read from this book expo haul. Can't even tell you how excited I am to dive into this one. You guys know how much I am kind of obsessed with Ashley Elston because she's amazing. And yeah, I'm dying to read her newest book. I also got this really super cute print. It's from Pumpkinhead which is Rainbow Rawls new graphic novel that's coming out as a little sampler of it and I also so we went to this like fierce reads 
thing and we got to see Marie Lu and she did a little talk about Rebel, which I have another sampler of here. The text is purple, which is amazing. And I was really excited to learn that Rebel is actually a standalone. So if you haven't read the Legend trilogy, you can still read Rebel and be fine. And she recaps like pretty much everything that happened in the Legend trilogy in this. So you'll be okay if you want to just read this. And it's set in the same world as Warcross. Amazing. I also got Into the Crooked Place by Alexandra Cristo. I actually had a different book that came in my bag. It was Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson, but I haven't read the first book and my friend Rachel loves that first book. So I gave her my copy and then she gave me her copy of Into the Crooked Place. So it was a good trade. I also got the map from here to there. So excited to read this one because I started reading The Start of Me and You last night and I'm just about halfway into it and I'm obsessed with it and I've been raving about it to all of my friends today and I can't wait to read the sequel after this one because I'm already just in love with these characters so so that's pretty much it i'm just gonna blow dry my hair and then call it a night and be up really early and do all the book con things and really hopefully finally get a copy of the starless sea i am really hoping that it works out tomorrow we'll see what happens the starless sea saga continues good night for one new york times and usa today best-selling author of the mortal instrument series the infernal device trilogy and the dark artifice series She's also the mastermind behind the Red Scrolls of Magic and her latest Shadowhunters collaboration, Ghosts of the Shadow Market, which goes on sale this week. Her books have sold more than 50 million copies in print worldwide. And we're all looking forward to her next Shadowhunter series, The Last Hours. The first book, Chain of Gold, you are getting samplers of, will be out in March 2020. Please welcome Cassandra Clare. Film in the handoff. <laughs> Post it. Thank you. <laughs> Bob, I will be your trusty moderator this morning. So I believe there we'll have some time for questions as well. And so I think it's always more fun to talk with you guys than at you the entire time. So we're going to have some conversation between us, try to leave some room and some time for questions for you. You know the rules. If it doesn't end in a question mark, it's not a question. If it's longer than a tweet, it's not a question for right now. But we'll get back to that. But I want you to be thinking about questions, specifically questions about magic, about power, about questions that can be answered by any member of this panel while we have our conversation. So, uh, welcome to the Magic and Power panel. Obviously the coolest panel, the entire book on. I want each of our esteemed panelists to introduce themselves and their book with with a specific lens. I would like you to introduce your books through the lens of the power and magic in your story. So instead of telling us the plot, I would like you to tell us a pitch for your novel, uh, for your most recent novel, for the novel of your choice, or your up and coming, or your series, and and tell us about specifically the role of magic and power as it as it defines your story. Oh gosh! Okay, everyone's looking at me, and like that was the best intro ever. Oh. Uh, so my name is Stephanie Garber, and I'm the author of the Caraval series. book finale came out like three weeks ago and um it, this is actually really specific to the book like it's all like the whole book is about this struggle between um magic and power and this is kind of a small spoiler so if you don't want to hear it you can close your ears um but in finale love and immortality cannot coexist that's it oh yeah we're <laughs> leave to go really short with my two. Okay, my name is Melissa Albert. I'm the author of The Hazelwood and The Upcoming Sea. My book is about a girl who has always felt powerless and she doesn't know why. And it is about the power of being the person to tell your own story and kind of the hunt to reclaim that power. Hi, I'm Margaret Rogerson, the author of Sorcery of Thorns. My book contains magical libraries that are designed to hold living grimoires, grimoires that are sentient and dangerous. They're brought to life by sorcery, and in this world, sorcery, sorcerers gain their power by making Faustian bargains with demons.
I am officially home from BookCon. My day is over. It was, it's Sunday too, so it's the last day. But I just filmed a couple of videos. Unfortunately, YouTube is being a major jerk right now because I actually already filmed my book haul and I've just been waiting to put it up, but YouTube is like not working. I've been trying for like three-ish hours now and it just will not post. Otherwise, today was a really good day and I got to hang out with a lot of friends and I got to meet a lot of people at BookCon, which was really exciting. And it was just really nice and really calm and a really good way to like, like end out the convention. I feel like I had a much better time at BookCon than I have in years past and that was also really nice. So yeah, I, it, was a, it was a really great experience overall. I feel like this year I had a really fun time at both Book Expo and BookCon and it was really nice to get to meet some friends that I had just been friends with online. But yeah, I'm super tired. I'm, I feel like I probably did a very bad job of vlogging at BookCon just because everything was kind of chaotic. Just know I had fun and I'm gonna go read. <laughs> so that's the end of this vlog. I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!